twice on the way here so don't you have any pull well I got out of them but I did still got <laughs> still slowed me down come on let's so. go we'll sit out over here and we'll because I know you got your ESPN radio right yes sir up, yes so sir so we're gonna so I can it. hold them off a few minutes but yeah good grab a water there for you okay. good deal so I was doing okay entertaining them I think a good little bit. good but good. they actually saw selfies of me <laughs> which, is, which really is, you know, they're really... I threw a couple of them up on Instagram on the way here. Did you? Okay, we'll go, we'll go take well, a look. Well, I was waiting on the police officer to yeah, give right. me my, uh, my warning. Right, so let me just do this here. Hold on a second. We had... It's okay, we're checking it out. They've been, really, they've been really sweet to me. You know, it's funny, they were not taking any pictures of me. Why are they taking pictures? What's going on? I think it might be the glare. It might be the, the glare. glare. It's okay, I got a series. I need a hat, too, actually, going on. Okay. So I started going, what was really good is I went through sort of the technical parts of mm -hmm. actually how to go about taking a selfie. So uh, we have a lot in common, believe it or not. You were in Men's Fitness Magazine, right? Yes, sir. So you know what? I was in Men's Fitness Magazine. You guys are not believing that, right? But that's actually Nice. Me too. <laughs> Look at you. Now, yeah, I actually, men's, men's Fitness, I got uh, the cover of Train Magazine coming out in a month. I'm pretty stoked about that. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be on train unless it's for like choo-choo trains. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about your social media, right? So you're here because you have like stunning social media. See, I think, and I just actually talked to them about that a little bit when you were, when I was here, is talking about how as a business person, right? So I'm looking at you as a business person, mm -hmm. you know, the average NFL career is how long? Uh, it's either 2.9 or 3.1, but let's just call it three years. That's so right, for it's a not very for long. For a punter, how, is it longer for a punter? I'm not sure what that average is. It's much more difficult to get into the National Football League as a punter because there's not as much uh, turnover at the position because oh, there's a re reduced uh, chance of, of yeah. injuries. Yeah. And, you know, once you show uh, you can perform consistently and stay healthy, um, you know, you can play for 10 or 15 years. You know, I mean, you look at Jeff Fiegel's. Uh, 20 years in the National Football League, and one of my dear friends, John Carney, was 23 years in the NFL. So the tough part's getting in, but once you get in, uh, you know, you show consistency and stay healthy. It'll be a long career. Yeah, which we hope you have. Yeah, I hope but, so. But, I, but what I really appreciate is that you're really taken, you, you're really smart as a business person. Like when I look at your, I, I know a lot of well-known people, and it's just shocking how little they promote their own brand. Mm -hmm. You know, while you're a Giants player is when you want it to happen. Yeah, you know, I mean, I understand that the career is, is not very long, but, you know, for, Lee, for me, I don't want my legacy to be only about football and what I did on Sundays. I want my legacy to be, you know, how did I take that blessing in my life of being a professional athlete, having that platform? Who did I inspire? Who did I touch? Who did, you know, who did I help motivate or inspire? So uh, for me, it's not really about football. Football is really just kind of an avenue or a vehicle to help me really talk about what I'm passionate about, you know, fitness, nutrition, my faith, my family. I mean, I think those are all things for me that are priorities and football just gives me that platform to be able to share that with other people. Right, and that's exactly my point and it's clear that you're doing that. I mean, you're sitting, I'm looking right now, you have 140,000 Instagram followers, which is a really impressive number for somebody that doesn't put themselves in bikinis all the time. <laughs> well, maybe you do that a little bit, right? I am right? guilty of a few shirtless right. selfies. Yeah, I consider myself powerful. I have 2,000 Instagram followers, right? And you're sitting on 120 for Twitter followers and you actually use Twitter effectively which is something that I don't see a lot of people doing mm -hmm. you really do you're out there tweeting tweeting talking your brand and your brand consists of being a dad being a football player doing community action activism and all of those things and that really creates your brand um, so I went through I just talked a little bit about the tips that I, I know you you like a selfie stick right you what I do you know and I've actually gotten into uh, using a GoPro as well because they've got a Wi-Fi feature um, not necessarily to, to hook onto Wi-Fi uh, in the internet, but a Wi-Fi feature that will pick up your phone. So essentially like Bluetooth, so I can shoot a video with my GoPro. I actually did that earlier in MetLife Stadium. They had a zip line in there, and um, I took a GoPro video of me right. uh, zip lining, and then I can send it right to my phone with an application there. And then at that point, I can put it onto Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or you know what have you. I noticed that a lot of your most recent Instagrams, the selfies, have been videos, mm -hmm. which is really unusual. Not too many people are doing that. And so why did you choose to do that? Why do you do videos? Uh, I think it's a little bit more organic. And for me, with my social media, you see a lot of professional athletes, you know, they're posting about, you know, my Rolex or my Lamborghini or my, you know, my yeah. 10,000 square foot house. But, you know, that's just not me. I'm not that person. And, you know, I've been very blessed financially. I've done well, played for 10 years. And, um, you know, I can afford some of those things. But I think when you put that on social media, 
it's almost kind of like depressing to other people because they're like, you know what, I'm never going to have a $100,000 watch and a Lamborghini. And I'm not about that. You know, for me, true, um, you know, I, it was a Bob Marley interview I saw. And, I, you know, I love to, to watch documentaries and read books. And they were interviewing Bob Marley and they said, would you consider yourself a rich man? And he looks at him and he says, what? Um, you know, do you, are you wealthy? Do you have a lot of money in the bank? Do you have a lot of things? And he goes, you know, to me, those aren't riches. You know, my, my wealth is in life. And, you know, it's something uh, that resonates with me because I'm not that far removed from being somebody that looks up to professional athletes or, you know, philanthropists. And I want myself to appear organic and real on social media because that's what I am. You know, I change diapers. I'm a dad, you know, I got to wipe poop off the wall when my kids get it on their finger. You know, I mean, it, it's real. And for me, I just document my journey and, and it's, it's worked well for me and, you know, increasing my followers because, man, he's just like me. You know, the only difference between me and the other men that are sitting in this room is I have a rocket launcher for legs, so. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I made the joke that, you know, 130-yard playoff punt, you know, and that's it. That's yeah, it, oh, yeah. It. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm an injury away from my career being over. And, um, you know, I realize that, you know, I, it, it's a special blessing to be able to do what I do, especially for a franchise um, as successful, prestigious, and uh, clean as, as the New York Giants. So really that brand of what they're about fits really well with me and uh, this community uh, you know, New York, New Jersey, the surrounding tri-state area have really embraced me because I'm about that life. You know, I'm going to tell you that the fatherhood aspect is really a big trend today. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a single dad. I actually raised five kids on my own. Wow. And I, I didn't, I don't, I don't, it's not for applause. So for me, you know, I can sit here and talk about I run this, this big camera store and we run this education program and all, but people don't really pay as much attention to you until you talk about yourself humanly like that. Mm -hmm. When they see you as a responsible dad, to me, that really, I, I don't even think maybe you realize, I think you do because you post a lot about it, but that really enhances your brand in a way that differentiates you. Yeah, now you know, initially I didn't start to do that because I thought people would enjoy it, mm -hmm. I, but I wanted people to see, you know, a 360 degree view of what my life is. You know, a lot of guys are, are private about their, their family life, which is fine, that's their, that's their choice. Uh, but for me, I. I want people to realize that the greatest responsibility, the greatest blessing that you can have is being a parent because, you know, when you bring that child home from, from the hospital, that is that baby is literally like a big piece of clay and you can mold them and you can shape them and, you know, they're a reflection of you as cliche as that is and sounding, I mean, that's it, you know, when you, you know, my seven-year-old and five-year-old and two-year-old now, uh, rah, rah, everybody loves her, but um, you know, when they meet people, I've really Im uh, impressed upon them to look people in the eye and shake their hands, yes sir, no sir. And, um, you know, I think that's one very small skill that a parent can uh, teach their kid that can take them so far in life. Because, the, you know, when you meet somebody, that first impression uh, will stick with them for forever. When you find children that don't have manners, you don't usually have to look very, very far. Right. Now I'm going to tell you something. So my kids are all going to be in their 20s. Actually, my youngest daughter will be 20 in August. And the thing that you're going to find is that your children are going to raise you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've grown a lot uh, as a man and but really learned a lot about myself since becoming a dad. You're going to see as, they, as those children you know, grow up and you have to teach them, you yourself are going to progress. And you're doing it already because you're mm -hmm. really an involved father. And one of the big issues in our society today, obviously, is dads that are not you know, not around the kids. And I think that you have a unique opportunity to be a role model for what dads are supposed to do. I mm -hmm. think that in some ways is really, you know, as a, as a star football player, to be sitting there not being the guy that goes into the nightclubs and does the things that are wrong, mm -hmm. but really are featuring the fact that you're a dad, I think is a really a really significant part of your brand. Thank you. And you should embrace it. To me, Compliments that, tonight, man. I'm yeah, digging this. That's right. Have you, have you messed with Periscope at all? No, not Periscope. So Periscope is like a live streaming. I think it's kind of like the future of social media. So what it is, it's a live streaming. So if I'm, you know, here talking about this right now, I pull up Periscope and people all around the world can sit here and listen to the entire thing. So it's kind of like Skype, but you can do it with a million different people. So I'm actually going to sign on right now. We're going to Periscope this. So why are you playing with that? Here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, te I'm going to tease you a little bit. So I really like this particular uh, video that you posted. Let's tease you a little bit. Were you slowing down for granulates, 
<laughs> Torturing your grandmother. <laughs> All right. Would you mind holding this just while we're sitting here talking? If you don't mind, thank you. So I really like that. I really like that technique. And once again, you know, when I talked about all the selfie techniques before, that's really carried well in video. He's in a gym environment, right? So I think he's been known to be in a gym. Time or two before. T time or two before. And he's doing something really cute. You know, he's obviously not ordering. Who is that, by the way? That's your... That's my grandmother. That's your grandmother. My only Grammy I got left. That's and we, right. we have so a very special obviously relationship. Obviously, he's not torching her. It's funny, and it's engaging, and it really talks to his brand about family. I really, really like that kind of technique when you're doing selfies. It's really an effective. And once again, just like the one that I showed you myself, he doesn't have to have his whole face, his whole body. It's not really about that. It's really about talking yeah. about the... Let's see the, ex the experience I'm having right. with my grandmother. I'm trying to... You know, bring, yeah. kind of bring people into to my life, and that's why social media is so fun, because it's able to bridge the gap in between a professional athlete, a celebrity, or a punter, and their fans. So it's been a lot of fun for me, um, because like I said, you know, I'm not that far removed from, from being where you guys are at, and really just wanting some entertainment and some motivation. You know, and, and if you look through your, like I just, obviously I'm scrolling through your Instagram, if you look at it, I think it really carries your brand well. You're doing a really good job yeah, of, you. you know, it's the fatherhood thing, it's the football thing, it's the athlete thing, you, you got all of those things going. And like I said to everybody, whatever you do in life, you want your social media to actually represent that. Let's talk about it a little bit, let's go here, because I'm jumping around a little bit. Thank so you I for doing that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey everybody out there on Periscope. Right. That's right, we're at Unique Photo. Come on like down in Fairfield, right. New Jersey, right. 123 US 46. That's I'm going right to be here, here for three more hours. That's right. <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we have you trapped here. Follow me on Instagram or Twitter, at M Sweetwood. Can't resist doing that. So let's talk about some selfies that you did here. So there, I, in the lower left one there, right, you're using your selfie stick. Mm -hmm. So you carry that thing around? You carry it with you? Oh, yeah, it's in that bag right yeah, there. The I got right that. There. I got my GoPro camera. I, I got it all. I'm really I really ready. like it. I have, I, um, when I do selfies sometimes with my phone, I have that LG phone, and it's voice activated, which yeah. I really like, because then you can, you don't have to sit there trying, no, to, for sure. trying to do it. You know, it's like that. I'm fumbling the ball when I'm doing that, right? Um, so I saw this picture the other day, and I was just, like, laughing my ass off. So if you look in the lower right there, you, you, <laughs> you posted a picture of... Um, you, what did you say? Thanks, looks, mo like, thanks, mom, for the genetics or something you said <laughs> right. like that. Where'd you get that picture from? I just like ran across it on That's right. probably somebody else's Instagram or maybe somebody tweeted it to me. I was like, oh man, this guy's ripped. Right. So that's a really good technique too for that selfie kind of thing is to take something that looks like you or represents your brand. And he found a small child that. And it was on and it was on Thursday, so it's kind of like a throwback Thursday. Because so I kind of like right. tied it into what the trendy thing was. But, but that you day. see how he's thinking through the social media. This is not just some star athlete that just randomly posting stuff or whatever he does. It's actually thought out. And I always like to say I pride myself on thinking, thinking things through like that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I've had picture. People tell me that I look a little bit like Bruce Willis. So every once in a while, I'll get a Bruce Willis picture, and I'll do kind of this. Yeah. I'll do kind of the same thing. And you have people first. I get, I get Woody Harrelson all the time. I think it's like the long, yeah. big nose. I'm alright with it. Yeah, though. maybe, maybe. He's so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Bruce Willis kind of hot too, but, uh, but I'm, you know, much better looking. Let's talk about something that's a little bit uh, serious, all right? So I took this. Uh, so here is a selfie that you took. Mm -hmm. Right, so he was even thinking self selfie at a very difficult moment. Yeah. So you were in a pretty serious car accident. Yeah, it was uh, probably three, three or four weeks ago on the New Jersey Turnpike. I was flying. I had my my, oh, my wife had our daughter on uh, on Saturday night at about 7 p.m. and then I had to leave the next morning to come back here for for OTAs and uh, our plane got diverted from Newark into uh, D.C. and so instead of catching a flight the next morning and missing practice I decided to rent the car at about two o'clock in the morning and it hadn't been raining but it was raining heavily earlier in the day and so on the New Jersey Turnpike there was a section that uh, the drainage system had been blocked and so I ran into this massive pool of water hydroplane three or four times and hit the median at seven miles, 70 miles an hour incredibly blessed to be here uh, but you know just like anything else man I just documented my life right but he thought to document it and also you helped some people out of that didn't you Yes, yeah, so after I got in my wreck, probably, I got out of my car, thank God that I wasn't knocked unconscious, uh, pulled out my phone, was about to call 911 to be able to uh, have the police come and help get that car off the road. I didn't feel as, as if I needed medical attention. And then, literally, before I could even hit call, 
Uh, I hear a big splash, look behind me, a Nissan Maxima hit the same pool of water, hydroplaned and smacked into my car going probably about 80. Um, and then uh, checked three doors that were all mashed in, couldn't get into the car. And so I was able to wedge myself into the back right door. A uh, big, big guy, bigger than me, was slumped over the wheel, gut blushing from his nose and was unresponsive. And so long story short, I ended up uh, waking him up. It felt like it was a half an hour, but it was really probably about 20 seconds. And uh, pulled him through the middle console, through the back back door, and uh, you know I, I think he's doing really well. He had a fractured vertebrae in his neck and uh, and a broken nose, but it could have been it could have been a lot worse for for the both of us. I so see the roads in New Jersey have not been so good to you in the recent they, time. They, yeah, you know, they've. But that's you know what? It was best case scenario. Yeah. And so you know when I when I when I hear people go through, what was going through your mind? What do you think about that now? You think about life differently? What? Do, how does it really? You know what? You? I've always. Uh, made a conscious effort to uh, be very optimistic even during difficult times um, and I think it just helps you you know if somebody gives you a hundred dollars um, you know a negative thinker or you know somebody you okay let's say you win the lottery a negative thinker will, will be like oh man I'm gonna lose half of this to taxes you know a positive thinker is like man this is amazing blessing in my life so it's really just kind of the way you view things in life and uh, you know did was it you know incredibly difficult time for me to be able to get in a car wreck when I just had a baby but at the same time I walked out of the car incredibly blessed so you know I think in order to find true happiness in life you know I think viewing things through a positive lens uh, is is an incredible tool to be able to really find find happiness and success in life because people have the formula uh, for success and happiness all wrong. You think you have to find success in order to find happiness, but really it's finding happiness uh, in order to find success because, you know, okay, oh, I always wanted to go to Notre Dame. You go to Notre Dame and then you, you continue to set these different goals. You know, I'll be happy if I can just make this much money or if I could just drive this car. And then once you achieve them, you set other goals. You never really find true happiness. So really what we're doing is pushing the point of success over a cognitive horizon you know because we're greedy by nature and we'll never achieve happiness if it's something that's tangible so if you can find your happiness and be thankful for what you have now that's the point that you really become successful i mean i can't really say that's really forget all the selfie advice that we gave you that actually is really profound it's actually many years beyond your age and wisdom um for me i actually showed a picture of a selfie that i took with uh, the former mexican president uh, vicente fox and he gave a speech at a marketing conference It wasn't about marketing. Mm -hmm. He gave a speech about finding your purpose in life. And he said, you'll be successful in your life if you look for a purpose that also benefits other people. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, he's trying to lead you to find happiness, and that is the way you're going to find happiness in your I life. I agree with you. That's right. It's really about how you, what you do in your life that helps other people. I know for me, I've searched my life for my purpose, and then all of a sudden, one day, I realized it was really about raising my kids. Mm -hmm. Their mother left them when they were little and raising my kids into a healthy, successful, I have a really successful, and I consider myself really blessed. So when you have something like that happen to you in life, you know, you're in a car crash or something really bad happens to you, you sort of look at it in a positive light. Oh, I yeah. think it, it changes everything and you grow from those experiences. And I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't raise my kids. So I said, your kids are gonna raise you. Yeah, you learn a lot about yourself uh, w when you become a father. Um, by nature, I'm very self-centered, I'm very selfish. Um, I think of my fir myself first before I think of anything else. And, you know, as I um, had children and the more children I had, the more selfless I have to become. And so, oh, yeah, that's right. um, you know, we've all got character flaws. And, you know, for me, I'm not afraid to admit it that, uh, you know, I'm a me, me, me guy. Um, but it's really helped me to, um, I don't want to say break that because that's always going to be the way that my mind is, is wired. But, um, you know, I think every single day, is an opportunity for self-improvement, whether it's in fitness or whether it's spiritually or mentally. Um, so it's, and that, that's the fun thing because we all have different challenges in you life. You know what's really interesting is I think you actually described the heart of your success right there because to be a, an athlete at the level that you're at, I don't think there's any way to do it without having some selfish. You have to be. You have to be because yeah. you have to go for the kill everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. But now you're, you've balanced that in your life by taking care of your family and being there for them. Mm -hmm. And that sort of balance makes you a very powerful person from deep inside. Yeah. That's really the I secret. I think that, uh, you know, and it's contagious as well. 
Um, you know, nothing make. I, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm fighting the urge to do it selfishly because when I do random acts of kindness or different charity events or take a girl to prom or these different things uh, that I'm involved in, sometimes I have to take a step back and ask myself, am I doing this to change people's lives or motivate them, but am I doing this selfishly to feed my own ego and because of how it makes me feel. Like it's almost euphoric for me to see people's faces just light up and just be so happy. But I think, you know, there is definitely a degree of self-service when you do that to make yourself feel good. But, but if, for me, it's... What's it's wrong, but what's wrong with that? There's really nothing... There's not, but you, sometimes I question my motives uh, and I want to have pure motives and I want to go about things in life for the right reason, not just doing the right thing, but doing it because you want to. You know, it's kind of like when your parents make you go to church and you know, let's say you made fifteen dollars doing chores that that week, and you got to get a dollar fifty of it uh, to the church because that's a ten percent tithe. Um, my parents would tell me to do that, but it wasn't until I became older that I felt good about doing. It. I was like, oh man, I got fifteen bucks, and I got to give a dollar of fifty to the church. But you know, that fifteen dollars was a blessing. And, you know, to be able to give back, and I'm not up here to preach because I'm the last person that should be preaching. I'm not a holy roller, but I do understand that I am blessed. You know, that actually is a really good point about charity, and there's actually nothing wrong with sort of doing it either by force or just doing it because you think it's the right thing to mm -hmm. do. It's, it, it's, it's actually written in the scriptures in some sense that it says that, that if you do that, you will eventually do it for the reason that's in your heart. And that's my, my mother and my father taught me that... I don't want to necessarily routine, but they taught me the right way to do it. It wasn't until I became older, you know, like I am now, if I, you know, if I get a new sponsorship and, you know, let's say Nike gives me X amount of dollars, I'm like excited to be able to, to give that back and, and, you know, whether it's donating that to a foundation or a charity or literally just cutting a check, you know, when they do tithes at church, I look forward to that because I know uh, there is a higher power is the reason that I've found success and happiness. And so I, I get excited when you I know, have that opportunity you know, now. And, it, and, I, and I really am a firm believer in this, that when you give charity, and the more willingly you give charity, it comes back to you. Yeah. If you look for it to come back to you, it's but not But then you also have to ask yourself, well, am I giving this because I want to get more? You know what I mean? So sometimes I, no, I play mind get, games with myself. Of course, but you're still this doing This is a weird place to live in, guys. Yeah, no, I understand. I'm, I, te <laughs> I, te I, te I tend to be in that space, too, sometimes. I do a lot of charity work, and sometimes, like, am I doing this? You know, I'm engaged in a photographic charity that uses photography to help people. Right. Like, am I doing this because it's promoting my yeah. brand? or am I? But ultimately, we're helping people, so that's yeah. really what it's about. 100%. You actually brought up another thing. I'm going to ask you one last thing, and then what I want to do is I actually want to give everybody, because they've waited extra. We're yeah, gonna give I'm them so sorry about that. We're going to give them a chance to get some pictures with you and things with questions and stuff like that before you go out, because I know you got to yeah. do your radio show. So you talk a lot about God and church, and you know, you know, there's a, a well-known football player who played for um, a little while for the Jets. Um, Tim Tebow. Tebow is my hero. That's right. So you know, he talked a lot about uh, his beliefs, mm -hmm. and he has been ridiculed nationally for his beliefs like that. I have no idea what this is doing. Have you faced that? Um, well, right? yeah, I don't have the popularity that Tim Tebow does, and I think anytime people become successful in their industry or become popular in general, there are gonna be people uh, who are going to uh, thrust negativity upon them, and you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're never gonna see anybody saying negative things to you who's actually doing better than you are. So. Um, you know, Tim Tebow is the type of guy that I would let my daughter, you know, date because he's a good person. And, you know, the guys I've never played with him. I don't know him well. Just trust. Wait till your daughter's 20 and come back to me. Yeah. Let me, let me <laughs> that's my daughter's up there. I'm not letting no football player near my daughter. Well, Sorry. Tim, <laughs> Tim, Tebow, Tim Tebow is not a great football player, but more important than that, he's a, he's a great person. Yeah. So I think he's got an incredible amount of integrity and he's handled the successes really well. And he's been through a lot of adversity because as a professional, he hasn't found the success yes. that everybody thought he was going to have and he's handled it incredibly well. Yeah, I actually feel, he's one of those guys I actually feel really bad for because he has taken abuse that he really should, he doesn't deserve. He's really he's handled it well. I mean, he, especially for a young kid, and you know, a Heisman at, at, as a sophomore, 
Um, you're just uh, an incredible person. I think you, though, I, th I think somehow you're more likable because of the brand that you've created, so you're less likely to take that kind of, you know, you stand up there. I very rarely have uh, people say negative things to me on, on, on my comments or, you know, on Twitter. Every once in a while you have a couple trolls, but for yeah. the most part, we all um, I don't perpetuate it, though. So if somebody says something negative to me, on social media, they're looking for a reply. So every once in a while, if they say something ignorant, like you suck, you know, the Giants blow, this, that, the other, I'll be like, you know what? Um, thank you, I'm gonna pray for you, God bless you. You know what I mean? I'm not a holy roller like that, but you know, for me, it's just killing them with kindness. And so after they say that, and I reply to them, they're like, oh man, I thought he was gonna say something negative back to me, but I don't know, I just kill them with kindness. You know, and you're gonna come, uh, you know, the more successful you become, the more people are gonna wanna see you fail um, and that's just, it's human nature, that, that's how things go and, you know, it takes probably less effort to encourage somebody than it does to, you know, pull them down and, uh, you know, especially with bullying every, uh, you know, now it's, it's, a, it's an epidemic and they have so many, so many different ways to bully people, you know, with social media and saying nasty things on people's comments and so it's a tough time to be a kid, uh, but at the same time, I think if you surround yourself with good people, you know, I your friends are a clear indication of where you're going to be in the future. And so I try to surround myself, you know, with good people, with positive energy, um, you know, because there are going to come times where you're going to need those friends. And, you know, the friends that you think are your friends, um, you know, a lot of times they're not. You know, and having a strong father figure, someone who's good at social media, this is really, it's an interesting, fine point, but your kids are going to be able to handle that online bullying. They're going to actually be better equipped. They're going to they know their dad manages social media. You're there for them. You have mm -hmm. a good communication with them. I can see by the way you're playing with them on all yeah. your social media. They're going to be okay. You know, they they're going to be in good shape. I'd like to think so. Yeah, I know my kids were really pretty tough about that. They didn't uh, they didn't take nothing from nobody. You know, they good. were able to deal with it. Um, how about we do a selfie with the right? But first, let's do a selfie. selfie right? Let's do a selfie. Let's Come do on. it. Let's do it. All right. We'll thank you it. for doing that. You do it and post it because you're going to get a better. Uh, all right, guys. All my friends on Periscope. We'll say, say hi to everybody. I'm schooling these people up on how to take a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you guys tuning in, man. I'll get back to Periscope soon. All right, so Let's do it. You let me, me pull my selfie it. stick out here. And you'll all be in the selfie, which we'll post. So if anybody's looking to get one of these, they're like 18 bucks. We have them out in the store, by the way. Oh, we well, do there so you go. Something. You don't even so. need to do that. One step shop. <laughs> so if anybody mind. needs any of these, Unique photo is the place go. to go. There you go. So now you're all going to buy selfie sticks and I'm going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have patented this, man. I'd be rolling right yeah. now. But you know what the, the sick thing is, is I, even if I had a hundred million dollars, I'm so blessed because I would still be doing exactly what I'm doing right now here with you guys, playing football and doing these different charitable things. And I think that's when, you know, you have found true happiness and success when if you could retire and stop doing things, if you would still in your heart want to do those things that you're doing right now, that's when you find true success. So, hey, number five, get up here, dude. You're gonna stand right next to me. <laughs> can, we, can we kill this thing right here? Is there any way to turn that off? Actually, you know what, come over here. He's gonna, we'll just go right here. We're gonna go like this, okay. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, that'd be great, thank you. <coughs> All right, everybody, you guys can stand up and act like you're a little bit excited to be in here. All right, I'm going to tag everybody, I promise. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Okay. Come on, you and me, we're going to get one right here, just a quick one right here. Let's see if we can do this. There we go. There we go. You guys have any questions? Come on, let's, we'll take some so questions. So guys, I did, uh, I did bring my Super Bowl ring, so uh, I am so, I, again, I am so, so sorry for being late, but um, I'm going to start this radio show here in about seven you minutes. Have but you have no, um, yeah, they sent me a thing. You have it before ten. Okay, got, great, we, perfect. We got some, you got a few so I uh, I brought this and I will just put you responsible for it. But you guys can take this around. And I was planning on taking pictures with each and every one of you guys singly. But yeah. um, I'll just pass that around. You guys can enjoy it. Take some right. pictures. Come on, come up here. We have this young man. We're going to get him a picture. Come on. You nothing. We want a picture right with him. Kids first. Yeah, let's, let's go. That. You ready for the picture? Let me sit this down. There we go. Get in there, man. Right. Actually, you know what? If we're going to do that, can I steal that ring? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. We'll let the, can we borrow the ring? I will give it right back to you. All right, give me your hand. Put that thing on. Make a fist. 
Hold that out. All right, hold on. So I'm going to teach you guys a trick. Hold that thing out again. So I do this a lot, and I figured out a way to get people a really good Facebook profile picture. I'll put it right on the ring. Tap on that because it focuses on the ring. And you can still see his face, but it's a little bit... A little bit blurry, but you can see the ring really cool. So that's something I've kind of like figured out after trying to help people find a really cool picture. And nine times out of ten when I do that for people, they're like, Facebook profile picture. <laughs> so there you go, man. Pretty rad, right? Let's do, let's do this, young man. Kids right. first, and then we'll get everybody. All right, let me see your hand. Put your finger up, make a fist. All right, who's got the phone? All right. So if you want to come up a little bit closer... Um, there you go. So tap on the ring on your screen, and then our face will be blurry. Excellent. All right. What's your name? Justin. Justin. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, sure. You got a pen? Yeah. Actually, I think I got one. Maybe I don't. There you go. And so during the uh, during my radio show, guys, we'll we usually like we'll go ten or fifteen minutes, and then we'll have like a five minute break. So uh, in between breaks during commercials, I'll be able to take you, pictures you and make a couple. You got at least ten minutes, by the way. It's five to four. They, okay, good. They, they sent a note out saying you have till four ten to begin. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel I feel really bad for being so late, man. That's right. There you go, buddy. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure, right. my pleasure. Where's my number five at? You want me to sign that jersey? Let me see that pin, big guy. Thanks, Justin. You don't? Okay. All right. No worries. I love this jersey. Jersey with more. Yeah, you know what? Grab, bring that to me while I'm doing my show, and I can do it during. Does anybody else want a picture? Anybody else want a picture? All right. Get up here, Mama. All right. Hold on. Let me see your hand. I've, I've worn it. I love it. Okay. Hold on. Put it flat. There you go. Oh. Oh my god, I can't